Welcome to Face to Facts. Good to have everybody here once again. I am Nick Face. We have Phil Healy in the house. Uh, just out of the shower, it looks. And we have Tom Smith here. How's everybody doing? I feel like a wet rat. You feel like a wet rat. Yeah, I just, I did. And I did just come out of the shower. I'm like, uh, I got done with a meeting at NorCam. And then I did some other uh, work because I'm working from home today. Yep. Emailing and some editing. I'm like, oh, I have a couple minutes to take a shower, right? And then just, you know, turn into a sitcom y kind of like, you want to get my shower done? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, exactly. Am I wearing <laughs> pants? You'll never know. That's the thing about Zoom. You just never know. It's a mystery to us all. Uh, how are you, Tom? Oh, I'm doing just dandy. Uh, yeah. Tom's stuck in jail in our back room. <laughs> so, yeah, what, uh, what is that back room? It looks like they walked me in here, Phil. That's our. That's our, that's our uh, that's, you have canned that's, goods? That's the timeout room. The timeout room? No, oh, poor Tom. That's the timeout room. That's Will he ever learn? Will he ever learn? <laughs> no. no. I think I want to start first with the Celtics. I think I want to go with that first because there's a lot of things going on with this team that seems like they're in complete turmoil right now. So I want to. Oh, hear interesting. From I want to hear from our expert, Phil, on what's his take on how things look with this team. Uh, just my overall take. No, no, it's it's an intro. I don't think it's too they far off. Not, they are not a likable. They are not a watchable product right now. Whoa, 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 whoa! I think that I disagree with that. I think that's. I think uh, that Miami game was amazing. Uh, that Dallas game was great. I mean, barring like the outcome of the Dallas game and a couple few Marcus Smart moves, but also uh, Richardson moves, uh, which he played great. Their backup uh, point guard, the uh, former Atlanta. Uh, I was going to say Braves or Falcons. I'm like, oh no, no, Hawks. Uh, point guard uh he had some he actually had a good game but there was like a one or two possessions where they could have taken the lead uh, mm -hmm. on dallas and they just they messed up like a, they it was like a it was like maybe a four and three or you know coming off of a a turnover uh, anywho yeah I, I but i do think there are elements of turmoil going on i agree of course i think uh after their loss to because the last time we talked i think i don't think they had that loss to um which one? I tried who not to no, Chicago. No, it wasn't necessarily was Chicago. Was a big loss. It was the Ch Chicago was a big one where they were up Chicago. by like 27 Chicago. at one point. Yeah, that was again. And then it was a Chicago game. Yep. Yeah, that was and uh they were playing very well against that team. Then in the fourth quarter they collapsed. Or the end of the third and the fourth, they collapsed. And you know, they uh I think they lost another game after that, but Marcus Smart came out and just was, you know, some would say talking nonsense, but it was something that would that needed to be said, I guess. But then they had a players only meeting and then things, then their Miami, the game, uh, they played in Orlando. They won that game and Orlando is not a good team, but then they played back to back Orlando and Miami and Miami is arguably one of the better, one of the best teams in the league. And they kind of took them to the cleaners on a back to back. And I don't think Miami was on a back to back. It was a very good game. And one of Jason Tatum's uh, actually it wasn't Jason Tatum didn't have a good game in that uh, it was shooting wise, but he was doing some other Story stuff of the, on the season floor. so far with him uh his the dallas game he was amazing and it wasn't because uh of the points he got he was rebounding well he was distributing and he was playing good defense and you know what i'll say this every time jalen brown or tatum or anybody on that team gets a like gets a rebound that they shouldn't have or like fights for a ball that's when you know this team is going to like when they when they give a crap about like where the ball goes that's when you know you have some cohesion. I think the last game, they, I think the last two games they've shown it, maybe even three. But, you know, Marcus Smart had kind of a, a goofy play, like he wanted to get fouled by Porzingis, which Porzingis played great at the last couple of minutes. I don't know if you saw that game, Nick or Tom. But that was me on Saturday night texting a buddy about how fun a game it was. And we we're like, oh, I wonder if uh, Luke is going to do the same damn thing he did last time. And lo and behold, that bastard did. And he's one of the great players of the NBA. Uh, the bird comparisons are there, and I don't disagree with it. Uh, do I think he's a as good of a passer? I don't know, but he he definitely got fatter. He's got a long way to go to get in the Larry Bird oh, conversation. Hundred percent, and that's that's also on me. It's like the Hitler argument. It's just like you use it so many times, like it, it's null and void. Just like the Larry Bird comparisons, or Magic, or any anyone, or Jordan, or anything you want to pile on from those like Hall of Famers. But listen, I I think the turmoil is coming from Jalen Brown is out for like one to two weeks with a hammy or pulled hammy. 
And I think they don't necessarily know. I think uh, uh, Ume, uh, uh, Ume O, I won't because I'll mispronounce his name, last name again. I, I pronounced it correctly a couple of times, but I fail more times than I'm, than I'm right. But Ume, um, I think he. Oh, coach. Coach, sure. Uh, coach Ume. <laughs> Uh, he, I, I think he's at a weird place where maybe they finally are like, maybe we don't know how to play Brown and Tatum together because Brown's been great this season, but he was out uh, on the, uh, he was out at the Dallas game and some would argue that was one of their better games at the end of the, you know, the third into the fourth quarter. And they, I listen, I, I think it's foolish to say like they should be separated because I think they can play together. And if one pushes the other and just because if Brown has a 40 point game and Tam only has like, is like five of like 20 from the floor or something, if they split it up and you know, as long as they're both, as long as they win the game, that's kind of like the thing they both have to get used to. And who has a bigger ceiling? I don't know. I, yeah, sure. Tatum, but Brown's no slouch. And if you just want to like, I don't know if you just want to get them out of the conversation, I, don't know, I think that's foolish, but yeah, they're in a little bit of turmoil. I think they don't know. I think they'll be better the next game on, uh, I think, Wednesday night they play. I forget who they play. But uh, I – Play – I know the Bruins play tonight. The Celtics yeah. play definitely tomorrow night. They play the Raptors. Oh, and they're at home. And they owe them a whooping because – and the Celtics haven't won at home. That's kind of the biggest weird thing, too. That – it kind of, you know, it ticks me off a bit because it's Celtics like they're afraid. The Raptors, then the Bucks Friday night. Oh, that'll be a good one. That'll be a loss. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I listen. If Jalen Brown isn't in there, I, I think that's tough. But you know what? The Cavs Saturday what night. Do they do? I think that's a win. They're four and six. I think the back to back with the Cavs. So we play Saturday and then Monday. Oh, so Friday, Saturday. So that's is that at home? No, too? Saturday, Friday? it's a Saturday, Monday, Saturday, Monday. Oh, the Saturday Friday night okay. game is the Bucks. Bucks, yeah. So Bucks and Bucks and Cavs will go back to back. Sat Friday, Saturday. So they go Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, then Monday again. Hmm. Now we so, play the Atlanta Hawks. That's no slouch either. No, uh, they're not. They're a good team. Uh, I don't know Wednesday. exactly how they're doing this year. I think they're doing well, but they're a good team. Lakers we have on the 19th. Is that at home or at, uh, in L.A.? That is at home. Oh, wow. And so LeBron's they're at home for a while. That, that will probably – they probably won't see LeBron. Oh, yeah. LeBron's injury, LeBron a.k.a. Out. growing old, is – kind of what's going on which i don't know why people are surprised he's like what is he 36 is that old he is i'm ready for him to just go away well listen man if they don't i've never a... liked them i never will like them I'm... Oh, that's you that's you nick <laughs> it is me it um is me. i don't yeah i don't i don't share that same i had growing up with him i you know it's just like the same magic thing you know he grew up magic or bird kind of thing but then as i got older i'm like well he's actually pretty damn good but um yeah, I don't. That Lakers team, just the last thought, I guess, so you can go and do whatever. But it, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, money cannot buy you a championship. <laughs> like it, you can try, but and so a lot of times money doesn't hurt. But how the Yankees that? Yeah, well, I mean, case in point, right? Like, when's the last time they won? Thirteen I mean, years, three twenty-five. Garrett Kermit Cole. So. <laughs> oh well, yeah. There you go. And He's even really Mark worth to- all that. Yeah, exactly. Even Mark to show. Keep spending, thanks. Who was that, Tom? We woke you up. Only team team that money's bought a championship is the Buccaneers. Yeah, I guess. Money buying a championship. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, I'd say. uh, But other than that, I mean, like, money doesn't hurt. But, yeah, Russell Russell Westbrook, uh, AD, Anthony Davis, uh, Carmelo Carmelo Anthony, and who else is on? besides LeBron, but that was like the big, like Russell Westbrook and Carmelo Anthony, who, I mean, Westbrook is a, isn't I mean, a good player, but he's older in the two, two. And I don't think he has, I don't think he has the drive. Do you, do you see that in him? No. Oh, I think it's, it was, I listen, you just, you need to get role players, better role players for yourself, but that's, I don't know. I think the Lakers are a doomed cause. It could surprise me in the Just end. Waiting but... for, for me to actually sit down and enjoy a basketball game again. That's what I'm what, waiting for. When was the last time you enjoyed it? Paul Pierce, Garnett, that, that Oh, that my era. God. That era. All right. That era. I'm sorry, guys. You know, I know, Phil, you like Tatum and Brown, and you like this crew. I don't. 
So I'm what gonna a, be honest. I what don't. About they're not winners. They're not gonna win here. I don't want to be, you know, Mr. Negativity here. But time. Let's let's go. Get let's get right, somebody so, in here that can get something done. Oh, here we go. I'm so willing right. to just get them out of here. Oh, they all of them. Clearly, the toxicity in the locker room. I think it's led more by Tatum than it is Brown. But there's a lot of immaturity, and there's no accountability. I look at that Bucks, uh, not the Bucks game, the Bulls game, and after that, those two turtles snuck out of the garden and wouldn't man up and talk to the media after the end of the game. That told me all I needed to know right there. That told me everything. Who Tatum and Brown Trump's sitting or? there, and he's being honest, and he's saying, yeah. "This is what's going on. This is what the issue is. It's these two clowns." not being team players. That's what it is. But I don't think the coach yet, you know, uh, Udoka has the balls enough to discipline these guys, you know, like a Doc Rivers would in a way with that Pierce and Garnett and Allen kind of team. Well, no, no, I, I, and, no, I think that's, I, get, let, hold on, let's, these let's cut that off. On the same page. I, I think, think the Doc Rivers. The, that internal issue, the more I thought about it, yeah. I think that's what's going on right now. Well, the Doc Rivers thing isn't true. Tatum are two jealous little imbeciles right now of Marcus Smart because Smart has tenacity. Smart has that leadership kind of thing to him, but he's not as good. That's that's the problem. I think, yeah, I think you're right that Marcus Smart has that, he has that edge that maybe, um, or has that uh, willingness to do whatever to win. And sometimes to a fault where he doesn't have the talent. And also he'll take- I agree with that. He'll try to, like you said, he'll try to get in that big spot. And like he did against Porzingis, against Dallas, he totally messed it up. And he, listen, try to find the shot, not try to, you know, go to the line for it. But I mean, a lot of people in the NBA do that. So not to say it's it's good, but that's part of the culture. Well, I shouldn't say that. That's, that's a stupid way of uh, putting it because it doesn't really say anything. I hate really the culture anything. in the NBA. There you go. There are parts of go. it. There are parts of it that make me, but let me get back to your, your Doc Rivers uh lie blatant lie doc oh, rivers God. wasn't no he wasn't the disciplinary then he really wasn't you know who I, think was? He were, I think he pushed these guys a little bit no i them, i think that's play. i think you're right there but and i think, think doka can do that over time i just don't think he can do that doing and he's because yeah. it's only been a month you, you yeah can't, I, you gotta know right, your, yeah. you gotta know your place before you put your foot down and make that happen so i don't percent doka I'm not criticizing him. I'm sorry if it no, came no, off like no, that. No, no, I don't. And I'm not, I'm can't. more attacking the. That's um, why Brad Stevens got worn out because he couldn't sure. deal with Tatum and Brown because of their antics. They, because they toned him out is what they did. <laughs> they toned, they toned, him, toned out, him out. Yeah. They said, ah, screw him. I'm going to do whatever I want. But I think, uh, well, the, the Doc Rivers thing in that, that uh, second big three era, that was more, that was them. That was the players. I think, I think you're right. I think Doc pushed them and got them yep. to come together. In At least the 2008 group, I will say with that. Yes. No, I think, I think the 2007, 2010 group. could also be in, in there. I think not oh. having, uh, Al, what's his name? Um, Kendrick? Uh, Kendrick Perkins. Thank you. Was, was one of the reasons why they didn't win. I do. Cause he was uh, in the locker room. He kind of just, dis- everything got disassembled. When he well, was are you talking about when they were facing the Lakers again, or yes, the 20, yeah, that was 2010, 2010, I think 2009, 2010 season. 2009, yeah, when, Garnett got hurt. I remember that. That's right, and they were on a tear. And they were, yep. yeah. That team should have won three championships. Back yeah, back. but that was still, and I know I said it on the show numerous times. That was a apologize. real bummer. Yeah, it was. It was one of the best game sevens I've ever seen. Didn't like the outcome, but uh, it was one of the better games. But no, I I think Kevin Garnett was one of those guys who was a bully. And I know it for a fact because I knew a guy who worked, who still works in the organization. He was yeah. a bit of a bully, uh, yeah. but that's what they needed. And that's what they had. And uh, I don't have that on this team. Well, They're very complacent. Well, I feel like these Marcus guys, Smart might oh, be that guy. Oh, whatever. We lost. Whatever. I still get my millions. It is what it is. And so, Nick, that, would you take that yeah. Ben Simmons trade then from Philly? Oh, it has been too. No, that, no, that's no. a lose lose uh-huh. situation. That guy's a train wreck. No, I would never do that train wreck that's what the problem is i don't feel like like luka Doncic. i like that guy he's somebody that's a winner in my eyes i look at that as a winner but i don't think the he gave up on his coach too he got his coach fired too i number one likable that can be great team players 
and can buy into a system. And I think that's why he's being as successful as he has right now. Well, he had, he, no, listen, he's you, also, he's also got his coach fired. Uh, I like Luca a lot, but he's also a pain in the ass. Uh, he's also, whatever he also looks like he ate guys, himself. They're just pains in the asses. I, I, no, I, I never can think quite athletes in general. Of it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, listen, it takes us a particular type of stomach. This short little white guy over here, just, I can't, I can't. Oh, he's not? I'm, I'm just, oh, I, no, I'm talking about me. I'm talking oh, about right. me. I've just, I've never, never gravitated to that, you know, basketball game. Oh, I love it. I love the flow, but I, I understand that. I But I never gravitated towards um, hockey because my ankles are crap. And that's yeah, how it goes. My Achilles heel right now is uh, hurting, so I'm not much oh. currently on the oh, right now, but at least for today. No, but um, I, I, I do I agree want to with talk you. next. Let, let's go to the Patriots because I was very happy with what we saw from that that game. The issue, though, was that game was boy, oh boy, a snooze fest. Do you that guys agree quarter, with that? Brutal. I mean, that first quarter. I mean, first half. I mean, it was zero zero for a good amount of time. You know, it's field goal here, offsides here, penalty here, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. But then the Patriots started to get some things together, especially on the defensive end. The defense was the star of the show for the game from this past weekend, 1,000%. And you know, you know what a name, uh, and a name that we didn't really hear too much about in that game was uh, Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, he had one interception. I kind of expected that, whatever. But he, we didn't, you know. It, it's I forgot always, about that, Tom. It's always CBS's, uh, you know, uh, mo to start talking about former Patriots players whenever they're playing against the Patriots, and they hardly even brought up Gilmore really. And I don't know if that's because it wasn't Jim Nance and Tony Romo, and it was just two other people like random. I don't even. I those are I two was, of the worst yeah. commentators I have ever listened to. They well, were it's Gumbo, right? It was Gumbo who was yeah, Gumbo. just as bad, but the guy that was with him, I, I, again, ta- yeah, all of it? us here, we could have announced the game better than this guy. The amount of screw-ups that he had, I had to mute it. I threw on 98.5. I was listening to uh, the Queen Zoe cheerleader, and, uh... Zolak, and that group. <laughs> it was better well, than that. At least they could pronounce and know the names of players. Yeah. I will that say this Zolak. From what, it's amazing these guys get paid for that. You get sure. paid to do that for your job. That was awful. Oh, I love how bad Gumbel is. The worst Gumbel is. analyst I I've heard it. on television in my lifetime. Well, that was I got lucky. I didn't start watching until like uh, late in the second. So I oh, had to. Uh, you missed all the boring stuff. I did. That's what I'm going to yeah. say. I'm like, oh, the it's first great. half was. I, I think I fell asleep for five minutes. I'm not even joking you. I think no. I did. It well, was just, so bad. So what was it like? They were so. I kept reading about how sloppy and crazy they were with the ball. It started off so Isaiah Wynn yeah. is awful. Just to put it out there, he's awful. He's been an absolute disgrace on the line. He, did he, he have brain he, surgery? I think he got off sides like something. Three times, I think they he got started. on that. Yeah, he false started a couple times. Then the offensive line couldn't get their acts together on a few things. They couldn't block anybody. Where would this team be without Matt Judon? I don't think we credit that enough. No. He's well, outstanding. And you have to credit Bolden with that huge run that, you know, got them closer to the first down than anyone would have expected. I mean, he basically carried two defenders for, what, five yards? That that was tremendous. But, Tom, I'm really glad that you said Bolden's name because here's a guy that was a special teamer, wasn't expected to be a running back at all this year. James White goes down. This guy becomes your yeah. third down back. And what what he's done in the past couple games is spectacular. And he's an old man. He's an yes, he old is. man. He reminds like, I, me yeah. of um, – what was his name? Legarrett Blunt in a way, but Blunt oh, really sure. wasn't there for the pass game. He was there yeah. just to be the big boulder and clog up the middle and get yeah. the job done there. So this is, can it be sustained? That's going to be the question here because trade deadlines pretty much passed here. You can't really do much of you. You have what you got right now. Uh, OBJ, OBJ. <laughs> so that brings us to our next thing here. So, That's what I was going to, yeah. I think, Tom, you know my stance. I don't know if Phil knows my stance. You might because I'm so predictable. With I think I'll guess it, yeah. Uh, there you go. 
Odell Beckham is now a free agent. He has to pass through waivers. And if he you know, goes unclaimed by a team, um, pretty much he has to okay where he wants to go and everything like it. But what would you do with uh, that move? Is OBJ needed here? Or do you agree with me and put him on Exile <laughs> Island and deal with what you want to right in front of you without him he's, here? He's a crybaby. I Thank mean, the guy, the guy is crying about uh, what's it, Baker, not throwing him the ball. And he's getting so many targets. And there's a reason why Baker's not throwing it to him anymore. He's not catching wow. anything. The guy, the guy's th- literally throwing it right to him, and he's not catching the ball. Yep. Well, why would you? Why would you want to throw it, the ball to him? Why would you want to make him a primary target? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, you know, yeah, I, yay for his talent, nay for his his overall being, uh, but. <laughs> Uh, but you know, if his talent isn't even there anymore, then what's 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 the the trade off? You really want to know my so my take on OBJ? I've never been a fan of him from the start. I think he's a poor man, Chad Ocho Cinco. I think he's a poor man, Ocho Cinco is what I think he is. I actually think Ocho Cinco was more talented than OBJ. He was blown up by the media, all this hype for what a good year or two, and then he got hurt and then pretty much disappeared. Mm-hmm and didn't really turn into much. I think he's a cancer on any team that he goes to. So if the Patriots do bring him in, it's not going to be pretty. I don't think he puts them over the top, but I think he creates a problem within the organization in the locker room. I do. I think he becomes – he's a selfish SOB. That's what he is. If you you have a Worse than Antonio Brown. I think he's worse than Antonio Brown. Because I remember there was a debate that we had – Maybe a year or two ago when, yeah, when new, new OBJ. Yep. And we and I said Antonio right. Brown, I take that chance. Yep. I did say that. I have never been an Odell Beckham fan. I will never be an Odell Beckham fan. So if he comes here to the Patriots, that's their shame. Because if he's not he's gonna create a circus around him, I think, if it happens. Now I'm not ruling it out. The reason why I'm not ruling it out, who do the Patriots play this upcoming Sunday? The Browns. There you go. And Odell has a thing of sticking it to people to being, you know, he, he's Mr. He's Mr. Show. He has to do that show and, you know, be an actor and be the, the drama queen that he is. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of thing because Belichick loves him. He loves him and he wants him here. Well, Brady wanted him here too. Well, there you go. I do think that Brady would obviously chose Brown over Odell. We all know that. Well, yeah. Do you no, think? Do you think there's a chance to go to Tampa Bay, but you have like 80 different no, receivers there? No, no, we would have already heard <laughs> yeah. that. It already would have been done yeah. if he was in Tampa. I think. Already well, there's so many. Done. They have so many receivers. It's it's yeah. obscene. So I was gonna say, if you have a dog with you, Nick, it's more of a, just like your leg is growling. No, that's that's <laughs> my beast underneath. Me. Yeah, that sounds like a children's book. And my beast. But, uh, is, uh, <laughs> the the beast underneath. Because it turned into playtime under here. Oh, that's uh, so that's horrible. my take on that. Yeah. I am very happy with how the Patriots are, are at. They're at five and four now. They're definitely on the on the up. Should be able to get that win against the Browns this Sunday too. Should be able to get that. I, done. It's going to be a good game, right? It'll be a good game, but I think they can pull this out. And I think I want to see more consistency from Matt Jones because the past two games have not been great. You know, it's been salvageable. You know, nothing bad, nothing great, but. I, I really want to see a good game from him. I think he's due. I think it's time that he stepped up and we figure out maybe some connections with a unsung hero. Maybe it's uh, Aguilar. Maybe it's Aguilar getting a maybe touchdown. Maybe Myers gets his first touchdown pass. Yeah. Yeah, well. And maybe so my, hey, maybe ankles are turned. On Who? Ankles are tw- and maybe ankles are twisted all around just like it's good luck. He just goes up to all his, you know, his offensive okay. linemen. Yep. His little crack. Uh, uh, yeah, that's thing. which is just that guy i done or what's his name the linebacker like that guy was great that guy in, insane and he almost murdered mac jones uh so i didn't yeah, mac know, jones uh, did you see the little cheap kind yes, of call little, thing he did? he'll get a fine like, for that no oh, of course he'll of course he will uh he'll but no i'm nick i'm with you he's got to prove himself he's got to like you know what you know what's it sucks about the dallas game is he had he, had a, he actually had a pretty decent like, – that was a decent game for him. It was a and decent like, game. And if The he, Dallas game was winnable, and it should have been a win. Yeah. The Miami game also was, too. I agree. Even, won on that. 
Tampa Bay, you had a shot. One. Tampa so there's three teams that are right there. Could be a whole hey, that's different okay for story second right now. Division now. The Dolphins yes. fell off the face of the earth after what beating us. Yeah. That that does that astonish you guys? But how like, about I, the rest of this past weekend bit. with what happened? Yeah. How about Jacksonville beating Jacksonville Buffalo? and Buffalo? Yeah. What a shock that was! I, what an absolute shock that was. was well, they they also was had uh, one of the hottest teams, Dallas, losing six, to uh, the the Broncos. Which you know it, it now listen Denver like people are saying like that's a big upset, but Denver is not a bad team. They're like, sneaky it, good. Yeah, and they really are. Really they isn't really that are. great of a team either. I guess so. I mean, I get like, I don't know, man. It's a weird. I, I like it. It was Prescott's first game back. Who knows how shaky he was? But that's so much talent and potential there that uh, it just it makes you it makes you sick. <laughs> just how you know. I don't Dallas know. Dallas is never going to win. Not with not with Jerry Jones as their owner. Heck no. no oh really? No. Yeah. He's a cheap SOB. Anything? Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention too, the whole controversy with Aaron Rodgers in the NFL. With oh, sure. From Being immunized so, or whatever. I, I, I mean, stupid. If he, if he didn't learn how to take out a page in the Tom Brady book by now. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he looks like a fool from what he did. Granted, it's your life. It's your decision. Blah, Just shut blah, up blah. about it. Just, he could have just pled the fifth and said, yeah. I am focusing on kind of like the Patriots do. I am on to next week. This is what we're doing. This is what's happening. Shut up. But he gave everybody more fuel and everything. And, you know, I'm never going to say that someone's right or wrong with this whole vaccine nonsense that goes. Oh, I can on. do it for you if you'd like. Uh, I, 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 I'll take that bullet. I, I've I'll take the bullet. Chronic headaches this whole week from everything. People, you do you. I am so sick and tired of hearing everybody's take on it. The vaccine is probably bad. It's probably good. It is what it is. Just live your life, please. Live your life. Like Just I've, take I've had enough of people trying to agenda driven. Oh, you got to do this. You know, screw all the other people. It's your body, your life. Well, also, yeah, just be courteous to people. That's all. Like, that's not There's a big no like. common courtesy to anybody. Yeah, just one be way courte- thinking it's it's disgusting well, behavior. This world well, even, that we, we, we go with. Even right if you now. choose not to, which I don't agree with people who don't choose to do it. But even if you don't, then you know you're taking the risk. You're taking X, Y, or Z risk. And if you're doing that, know what you're getting into and know the atmosphere you're stepping into. And Aaron Rodgers is. We talk about like the NBA and millionaires who don't give a crap. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, he doesn't give a care. He doesn't care about his team. He doesn't care. I, and I used to really like the oh, guy. He hates the Packers now. I mean, we all know that. Yeah. But I mean, just in general, like doing something like this and it's just like, but who like, I'm sure someone would pick him up in a, in a heartbeat, but still like, come on, this is, I don't know. And also he's got more than enough money to do what he's doing and, and not like, you know, fall on flat on his face. If you or I did this sort of thing. Any of us here, it'd just be uh, monstrous. But yeah, uh, whatever. What are you gonna do? He's not on my fantasy team. Actually, I, I won a game because he isn't. Game for the very first time since probably two thousand, whatever fantasy came out. I don't have a fantasy team this year. Just oh, didn't yeah. have time. Didn't. Oh yeah. Didn't have. Didn't focus on it from anything. So. This is my first year. I'm doing very well. Is it? So, uh, knock on wood. Uh, knock on wood. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Right there. Um, so we'll let's, see. Um, let's move next to uh, the Red Sox and the rest of baseball because we have a new world champion. That is the Atlanta Braves. I know Major League Baseball is thrilled about that, but uh, yeah. I am happy for the Braves. I am. It's the first championship they've had since 95. I've been a Freddie Freeman fan. I think the guy is, is a good, good, solid MLB product that's out there from stuff. So I'm happy to see him win. And they were underdogs big time. You always got to root for that underdog kind of thing. So we have um, a lot to uh, like from this Atlanta team. They didn't have some of their key players. You know, Alcuna was out, Marcelo Zuna on that uh, domestic uh, awful business that was going on. Charlie Morton was down, one of their pitchers they had brought in. So it was nice to see what was happening with um, 
with everything going on with the Braves. Can I, um, I'm just going to mute this for my second for one minute. I'll have Tom and Phil just talk about the Braves just for a minute. Oh, all right. Now he's gone. So now. Now, uh, now we can talk about whatever. No, no, that, that was, uh, honestly, that was one of my favorite, one of my favorite World Series, non-Boston World Series to watch because, okay. I mean, first, of all, first of all, the Astros are trying to make it back after, you know, cheating and all that scandal and everything. Uh, second, the Braves have always been one of my favorite teams in baseball, ever since Chipper Jones and Andrew Jones and all those days, Craig Chipper Maddox, Jones, yeah. Tom Glavin, John Smoltz. Um, and third, I mean, this was just another great Braves team. They, they deserve to win it. They were, you know, they beat the Dodgers. That was another underdog series for them. <laughs> they beat, uh, was it the Brewers? I think they beat the Brewers. Yeah. Yeah. And the Brewers are, the Brewers they were, were a good bad team. team. No, they were a good team. Well, I They're, mean, that was, yeah. that was probably uh, other than the world series. That was probably their hardest, you know, their most even their most even series and then the two underdog series against the Dodgers and the Astros um and I mean Jorge Soler came out with the World Series MVP and that was kind of well deserved I mean he, he really put the Braves in a good spot in a few of the key games so really can't complain about that I mean Freddie obviously would have been another good pick but I mean Soler had what three Game leading home runs, or yeah. yeah. Uh, no, and also that last home run by Freeman was just kind of like icing on the cake. Yeah, and also like the I, listen, the Astros are a really good team, but they're an incredible villain. They're an incredible villain, and you had the Braves. You had this likable team, like you said, was like an underdog. And I keep forgetting. So I was listening to a podcast yesterday, and like they were up three to one over the Dodgers last year. I forget about that. I think in the NLCS and they were able to, you know, like you said, they went through the Brewers. They didn't have an easy road to the world series. They went through the Brewers. Uh, they went through the Dodgers who were heavy favorites and they took it to the Astros who were, you know, offensive machine. And they only held them to three home runs, three home right. runs. Yeah. And it's, was... Altuve had two of them, I guess. And their rookie pitcher, Ian Anderson held the uh, Astros to five pitless innings in the game that he started too. Yeah. I mean, Crazy. five, five <laughs> hitless innings against the Astros. Yeah. But I mean, and you got, you can't forget either that the Dodgers were the wild card team. They came out of the wild card and they were That's still true. having to win. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were in a, you know, they had 104 games they won and it was like the Giants 105 or something. So, I mean, I mean, that's, that, that's one of yeah. the most competitive divisions in baseball now is that. It's National yeah. League West. And that's kind of cool. The Padres never were even in it, and they were supposed to be. No, they were. Yeah, and those those three, or even, at least the uh, Giants and Dodgers, I didn't know it until I lived in L.A. for a little bit of time that, like, oh, yeah, the Dodgers hate the Giants. Like, we hate – like, Boston hates the Yankees. And now I – when I went – I went to a Dodgers-Giants game, and I had no idea. And I, I went to it uh, during a time when it was – when uh, Bonds was still trying to get the home run record. Yep. And it was great. It was 2006, that summer. And I wore a Yankee suck t-shirt because, you know, I'm an idiot. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, but I got some people giving me the the thumbs up and some people like, what are you doing? And some thumbs down, which I would have thought if you're a Dodger fan, truly, you would hate the Yankees too from like, it, just for the sake of, yeah, exactly. From that and just because they're an AL like rivals. Well, I think much. that's why they're still rivals now with the Giants because it was the New York Giants and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. And then they just kind of whoop, hightailed it. Yeah, I it <laughs> to the West Coast. <laughs> to the West Coast. The other Pick thing I bags. wanted to mention regarding baseball was the Red Sox have come out with some decisions on some players that are going to be back or not back for next season. So we'll start yeah. with um J.D. Martinez opting in. He will be back to finish out that five-year deal that was signed in 2018. I'm happy with that. I have no issue with J.D. back. I wanted him back. Um, we'll see what it looks like. He had a better year, obviously, from 2020, bounce back. But he did fall off the face of the earth, I want to say, that second half of the season, basically. So they got to get him healthy. They got to get him right. I'm not, I, I'm totally cool with JD being back here. He's a stable and anchor to that lineup. So that's all good there. 
The one that I am still kind of coming to terms with is a lot of it having to do with the market of there really not being another option out there. And it's kind of sad. That's Christian Vasquez being back. I saw Tom laughing oh. and he knew exactly what I was going to say. Your boy. So picked up, I will say it's an affordable contract, six mil for the season, but we all know my stance on Vasquez. He did come out oh, with that? some Wait. games <laughs> in the postseason. Let us know. He was clutch. Yeah. However, this season will go down that he just had as one of his worst he's ever had on a Red Sox. You know, but did he that play? Was, did he play a terrible. lot? No, I know he was yeah, pretty he's bad. Played, he played way too much. He way, okay, yeah. Because I didn't know if he played less or more than he usually does. We all, I mean, I was, I was, I was on yeah. the Kevin Pilecki uh, freight train trying to, get him to play a little bit more. But the remember. problem with him is he has no arm. Not that yeah. Vasquez has anything better, but uh, Pilecki had the best. Why don't you time. step behind the plate then, Nick, and let's see your arm. Well, let's do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to campaign for you. Something to say about that. So, oh, yeah, that's Captain right. Veritek will come after me again. But you really get like the wives really just go after you. I don't like me. Well, I don't like just take, take him out to a nice dinner, a brunch. Yeah, host like a Red Sox wife brunch. Well, that ought to go over. Where, where, I, where, I, where. I would love to be there. And just, hey, let's start the conversation off. Uh, let's talk about o, uh, OBS. Let's talk about how your husband <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Airtech, what do you Throw it right on the table. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Not? Over mimosas. That way. Uh, just so you know, your husband's not very good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I know, Mr. Mr. Face. Oh, oh I know. thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, the other one uh, was Martin Perez. Bye. Garrett yeah. Richards. Bye. The one that the one that's gonna be <laughs> tricky to figure out here is Schwarber. He didn't really have a very good postseason. I'm gonna he had one really good hit. He had that one, game. yeah, Grand yeah. Slam. That was yeah. it. The question is with JD now being here and first base kind of up and grabs, did you see enough to warrant him to move to first base full time? Because I'm in the camp where as much as Dahlbeck hit 25 homers and all that jazz, I'm all set. I'm all set. I, I've seen enough. I'm done with him. He is but isn't he, there. Isn't he worse defensively? Casas is about ready for the Red Sox to come up. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see some sort of a deal in Bring the offseason with Dahlbeck. Hmm. And I also wouldn't be surprised if Renfro's out of here now, too. Because yeah. of how bad his postseason was i mean those two right there were big time reasons why it didn't go the way it should have for the red sox the other questions that you have to figure out is devers is he is is there going to be some sort of an extension with him you also have to figure out xander bogarts who's on this final year of his deal and talks about position moving i've already been going on for the red sox if he moves to second or if Devers is moving over to first base or, or whatnot, you got to figure those things out too. Uh, one of the big names out in the free agent market right now is Carlos Correa from the Astros. He's shortstop. That's a question that's got to be determined on what's happening with Bogarts. So that's one to, to, to decide on. Clayton Kershaw is now a free agent. Justin Verlander is now a free agent throwing and everything. You also have Marcus Simeon, who is a free agent, who had a fantastic season for the Blue Jays. You got him out there. So you, got, you have some things to figure out. You have some things to figure out. I think pitching is uh, going to be important, but I also think it's going to be a little bit more improved from this past season. You'll have Sale hopefully a little bit more healthy and anchoring somewhat of, of the rotation. Uh, Rodriguez was offered his um, arbitration total of 18.5 mil. So will he take that for the season or will he go and explore something else with another team? The jury is still out on that. You have uh, Tanner Hulk, who hopefully will slide into that rotation um, and give them a nice piece. You have Avaldi. We all know and really like Avaldi with how well he's done. So I think pitching is going to map out okay. You got to really figure out that bullpen. You know, not but, having not having a closer really hurts big time. They got to really figure that role out. You got to figure out you what you're doing with Whitlock too. Is Whitlock yeah. going into the rotation or is he staying in the bullpen? Yeah. What and even Holt? Uh, don't you think? Would Holt. you think he might go? 
bullpen at all, or you think he? If I was to do any move, I think I would put Whitlock in the rotation. Yeah. And I would put Hulk. I'd I'd let him be in the bullpen. I don't know if that's he's my eighth guy, my ninth guy. I don't I don't know if or he has a stretch or whatever. Figure out if he's the closer yeah. or whatnot, but. I'm not super concerned on the pitching front. I'm more concerned on defense, positioning, and how how some people who are coming up on the ends of their terms, like a Devers or a Bogarts, are going to pan out. I think that's yeah. the big big thing here for the off season. They do have money to spend, unlike the previous off season. So, I think there'll be a little bit more activity this off season than Briars. Do you think they'll go for? Anything big? You think they're going to do a lot of one-year deal kind of? I really would. I I would really give it some thought with uh, Justin um, Verlander. Verlander, I would, yeah. I, I'm hearing that he's coming back, throwing well, throwing 96 after the Tommy John. I, I think I might take a flyer on him for two because he said he wants to throw till he's about 45, 39 right now, proven vet. Yeah, I, two, I think I I do something with him. Two years doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it just I think you get to a point with him and Sale and. Actually, Erod isn't that old. He's actually pretty good age. But like, yeah, him and uh, yeah, I don't know. Him and Sale. Maybe he's your third, or maybe in your second. And you have no Evaldi second, then Verlander, then maybe Erod. Then you have you a definitely got good, some figuring uh, out. Yeah. Um, anything else on the baseball front? Um, I don't know if we did. We do a show prior to um, Remy. No, we didn't. Actually, thank you for bringing that up. We didn't, because uh, I was thinking about that today. No, we have not talked about the great Remy, Jerry Remy. Well, let's let's do that before we go hockey and everything. Um, waking up to that news on Halloween the 31st, that was, that was heartbreaking. Because I think we were all under the assumption that the end was looking pretty near for Remy when he threw out that final pitch. Well, that he threw out the the ball in the wild card game against the Yankees. He came out with the oxygen tank and everything. He didn't look he didn't look very good. And after hearing other people's reports on everything about that, they already kind of knew that this was bad. This cancer that 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 came back from everything. And I don't know what it's going to be like without not hearing Remy on a broadcast or seeing him a part of the park anymore it's really sad to think about because he's been such a part of the franchise and the team for decades. You already don't have Orsillo on the, on the call. Now you don't have Remy. I mean, this is basically like a whole new thing now. And it's, it's, it's awful. I mean, he battled it for what? 10 years. Yeah, 2009. Wow. I think it came out. Uh, he had his first thing. I don't know of another person who's fought cancer for over 10 years and continued to, I think he was on his sixth round of this. Yeah. I mean, how sad. Well, I mean, it also how glorious he was able to, you know, extend his life and kind of that be that meaningful and being in people's lives. I mean, he, he thrived. It seemed on, Hey, he was a president of Red Sox, of Red Sox nation, whatever that may mean to you. Uh, he, like you said, he was one of, I remember with him with McDonough too. I remember when, yeah. like for a while, he's always been the commentator for me, the color guy. And, I do want to credit you know, Sean McDonough for something because there's some people that still think that Orsillo was the one that crowned him the rem dog. No, no, that Sean was McDonough. That was Sean McDonough. Yeah. Sean McDonough did that. Sean McDonough was the Red Sox broadcaster from 96 to 04. Orsillo mm. came in in 2001 and he was there till 2015. Yeah. And the craziest part of all of this, and Tom will know this and Phil, you'll probably hear it too. People are still outraged at the fact that Orsillo is not with the Red Sox still. Sure. I'm not the only one. I mean, yeah, we I was all say, you're right. Yeah. And I still can't come to grips in terms on why that happened. Because Orsillo and Remy were the best broadcasting crew in baseball for that time that they were together. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I don't want to hear it from another. They, they were. The comedy that was like, it was not kind of like a Seinfeld episode with them when they were doing their stuff. You know, you had, I remember one of them was the, remember the pizza incident? So the pizza, somebody threw a pizza at the guy. I don't know if you guys ever saw it. I one of the fans really threw either. a pizza at somebody and there was the whole pizza fiasco that went down. 
Um, there was another thing that Remy losing a tooth during the broadcast. That was another one that was hysterical. <laughs> um, it was like a comedy hour with them. That's what made the games fun because well, baseball was brought out the boring and their long games. Oh, air guitar. Yeah, the air guitar. They yeah. added in another element to capture your audience, to keep it funny and keep it, keep it moving and keep it cool. And I'm that's like what made them Dave. so unique and special. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like that time, Dave. Okay. Oh yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, I, which I love them as a radio broadcaster. I think he's good. Um, but I also love what's his, uh, uh, can, uh, what was it? Castiglione? I, I do love that. Oh. I mean, for radio, Joe Castiglione. Castig- yeah. Castiglione. Uh, it's great. But he, I, I've said it here in numerous times with the whole joke about him is, and he hits it way back, way back. And the shortstop has it. That and was Trupiano. Was, Trupiano that was, was around, way back. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, way back. Yeah. Way back. It's caught <laughs> by the ball boy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. I don't know. But there, yeah. Remy will be missed. There's so much good times with him. It's like you think of the summertime. You think of baseball, and like you said, baseball can be an inherently boring ass game. Big time. But I'll admit it. Well, no. But also, it's it's a volume game. Like any sport can be very boring, especially if you have 162 games of it, and you you tune in to talk to these guys and just hang out and just. See what's up, and sometimes it's just white noise with these two funny weirdos at the end. And also, Remy, he knew what he was. Not to say uh, other announcers don't, but he he knew the players. He knew what was going on, and he could, he was you know, a fantastic analyst. Yeah, fantastic the way he called things and knew kind of what was coming before it happened. That's what I with him and Norsola were crazy. That's that's what I think I really enjoyed the most out of the games is because nine times out of ten, a lot of these guys, case in point, this football game from the Patriots this past week, where you have a guy on there who has absolutely no idea what he's saying, calling, or doing. Remy's there, have being an expert on how the game was played, former player and everything, getting his inside, you know, information from stuff. I will say, and I don't like to give O'Brien credit from times, but when it was O'Brien, Eck, and Remy, that was the be- one of the best boosts and best calls of the game that there there ever has been. Yeah, and and so to, he's going to be he's going to be deep. He's deep sorely deep missed, deep. and and, I, it, deep and it seems like good good in his community, uh, good to his family and friends. And I uh, do hope that Jersey Street yeah. turns into Remy Way. I do hope it turns into that. Is, are they trying to do that? Around for it, they are. Oh, good. Good for them. Should going around for it. If it's not going to be Yaki way, I still Rem think dog it's way. ridiculous Rem, yeah. crap that's ever been. Rem dog way. You can't we call it call it Jerry Remy way. I think that's what they're going to try and do. So we'll uh, see how that goes yeah. from that. Last but not least, our Boston Bruins, who hardly ever play, hardly, but they do play again uh, this evening against the Ottawa Senators. This is the worst. NHL schedule I have ever seen for a team to start their season. It's ever. awful. Ever. They hardly play. They play a game. They're off four days. They're off five days. Wow. Well, that and seems to be the NBA and the NHL. That seems to be I, how they do it. It's pathetic on how it's been scheduled. People, so, want, people wonder why they're doing so bad. The Bruins last played uh, Saturday night against the Maple Leafs. It was horrible. It was not a good game. It was the first time they played the Maple Leafs since 2019, shockingly enough. Um, they threw I'll mark out there again in net, and I do have to tell you, folks, he ain't the answer. Tuka Rask will be here. He's already skating at uh, Warrior Rink, getting ready. He's going to be back, and I'll welcome him back. I will. I will welcome Jeremy, him back. Jeremy Swayman's going to bring the Bruins to the promised land this season. You watch. Um, Jerry's still out on him right now. I, I, I think I, I still it, have it, it, I have more I have faith still in Rask. I think he played last season hurt. I think that he has something to prove here. I'm gonna give him okay, the be- but, I'm gonna give him the benefit of the edge here. But think about it. One, you're playing every four days. Two, you're alternating with one of the worst goalies in the NHL right now. Yep. So therefore, you should not even be alternating starts. You should be getting every single game except for you one should. every now and then. And yep. two. He's one of the best young goalies out there right now. Or three. Yes. He's one of the best goalies out there right now. I, I give him the opportunity, Tom. I'm done with Allmark. I I knew this signing was going to come back and bite them. Because it's a five-year deal that they had on this guy. 
because I don't think they knew yet about the severity of Rask. And clearly it wasn't super severe if he's already way ahead of schedule and he's back. So what they're going to do with him, I think he's going to become the Rusney Castillo of uh, the Providence Bruins. All Mark will be down there. I do. I really think it's coming. He will be. There's no way they send Swayman down. Absolutely no way. Yeah. If they do, it'd be stupid. It'll be moronic. Um, I do want to say Patrice Bergeron in the past week had four goals, four goals. That was against, um, was that the Red Wings? It was. Yep. I, saw, I, yeah, I actually, that was a big game. That was the one thing I saw. I know. That was what? the one thing I saw. I was watching hockey. How about that? I, it was the one thing I caught. Like on like his third goal, it was uh, him and Martian was like the third. A lot of people were yeah. thinking that Bergeron was done and he didn't have anything Fools. left. I just love people sometimes. Fools. Like just ridiculous. Well, he's ageless. Look at him. Look, he's a vampire. He'll he'll be fine like he always is. He's a hockey player. Hockey he's player. True, true blue hockey player. True black and gold right there. Bleeds it. So again, the Bruins should, play. You should see Ottawa a doctor. Then. Ottawa, the Ottawa Senators that that will return to action uh, this Thursday. Then it will be the Edmonton Oilers for the Bruins on Thursday night, and then Saturday night it is the Philadelphia Flyers. And I know the Bruins want a little revenge for that. Wait, uh, early they, game. They're playing four games in one week. I know, it's isn't it? It's week? just absolutely what shocking. What is that? It's shocking. Anything else anybody wants to add? Oh. Uh, I will say this one thing on the heels of Jerry Remy, just before we go. Uh, you hit it. You guys both hit it on the nail. It's great to see someone who, you know, former players and coaches who call the game. And it's great to see John Smoltz call uh, that World Series because it, it seemed like very uh, appropriate uh, for the time being because he was one, on that last team that won it, like, what was it 36 years ago or 26 years ago or something crazy like that? Yep. And uh, yeah, he, he's up there. Tony Romo's up there is one of my favorites. I know he can be controversial as like people hate him, love him, but he also comes up with like, he knows what's going to happen. He calls it quite a bit, but I also love Jeff Van Gundy uh, as a commentator for basketball. Cause he is unapologetic and he calls out the BS quite a bit. And he's Best a lot of sports fun. broadcaster in any sport right now is. I don't know who you got, or you're asking me. I mean, right now it's of course, fuck, but I think it's Don Rosillo. Uh, I, I haven't heard his San Diego stuff, but yeah, he's, he's always going to be one of my favorite Red Sox commentators. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Joe Buck steps down soon. Cause I'm hearing a little bit of rumblings that because of Don's affiliation with Fox and everything already, cause that's what San Diego's affiliate is out there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's getting more national calls moving forward in his life. So hey, good for him. To him. He good deserves him. it. Yeah. He deserves it. So that's pretty cool there. All right. Thank you all for joining for another episode of Face the Facts. We will see you next time. Good luck for the Patriots against the Browns. Let's hope the Bruins keep uh, get back on track after a bad one against the Leafs and Phil's poor Celtics. Let's see if they pull it out. What are you going to do? We'll see you next time.